what is up guys and of course welcome to our another vpl battle of course with yours truly the scavenger or the scandinavian stuff lens and this week we are facing of course leo and the durham dragons and if you don't want to see the team analysis the links i was going to say but of course the timestamps of the battle and team preview are of course up below having that said as you guys can see on the left there we are facing a very very tough team even though i think you have an honest chance here of winning yeah, I mean, this is actually the second time I am recording this it's because I changed the team somewhat uh, before the game was starting and realized I had to take a more defensive approach against him because, well, I think he can maneuver against me defensively, which is something I hate to be adjusting for. Having that said, his team is as follows. Megalopony, Latios, Lander C, Arcanon, Shaming, Grey Ninja, um, Registeel, Sloking Explode, Skunk Tank, Raichu, and Combuskin. And... Uh, the quick rundown is basically which mons can I use that aren't falling to Megalopony, and it's actually kind of strict. I've uh, been juggling back and forth which one I really have to use, and it came down to which mons that just basically can survive it. And I don't mean survive it as offensively pressuring him, because then my team would have looked a lot different, but I have to have, of course, a defensive approach to this, because Slowking and Registeel are basically two mons that ensure that I can't offensively check him every time, which sucks a lot, <laughs> to be completely honest. So I decided to go with um, defensive Scolipede, uh, enough speed that the one speed would be faster than Lopati, and uh, with Megahorn, Earthquake, um, Toxic actually, and Protect. Uh, Toxic is basically there to stall out Landorus and potentially Arcanine uh, for at least one turn off uh, Toxic, and outside of that, uh, Megahorn does want it KO Slow King and Latios and Shaman and Greninja, so it's super important to have. Earthquake is basically filler for Registeel and Arcanine and um, was someone more Skunk Tank. There we go. But yeah, nothing really big to it. Uh, its main role is gonna be to, of course, just stay against the matchups. Uh, I was considering Bad and Pass, but really I don't think I earned too much with it because of the defensive approach I know I will be facing. But yeah, Scolopy looks nice for this matchup. Defensively, it's a kind of a nice mod for this because he's not too hit killed by a defensive Landers, which I'm kind of are expecting here. Uh, then we're gonna follow that up with Tornadus, Assault West variant to be able to take on Boomer's Throw, of course, Explode, besides you said. Ooh, sorry for joining there. Um, <laughs> not re recording this. Uh, but yeah, um, that's about it. It should be able to stay against Lodios. It has Air Slash over Hurricane. Basically, to not miss. Uh, it, it's our sole purpose there. Uh, Hurricane does not do the extra damage it needs in any way with this matchup. Uh, then we have Heat Wave, um, Knock Off, and Super Power. Super Power is there for Explode alone, basically. It also helps against the Law Pony as, as with a switch in. But really, it all comes down to with a Law Pony. Or the. Um, <laughs> this, oh, damn, I can't speak. The, <laughs> the Explode. And of course, you know, hit, hitting um, Greninja could be nice too. But Air Slash really does just about the same amount of damage as the Super Power does. So I think um, Tornado is going to be super important for this matchup. And I'm definitely going to try to keep the one somewhat healthy. Which, you know, Regenerator is, is, is for that after all. And uh, then we have the Yenji uh, standard set. Max speed, max special attack. Or not max special attack. I actually have 180 and I do believe uh, 72 in defense. Basically to be able to take a Adamant High Jump Kick from... Uh, I make a lot of if I'm forced to, and the extra power doesn't necessarily make the energy more threatening for this specific matchup. Um, with that said, uh, Rock Polish, Protect, uh, Moonblast, uh, Power. Perfect coverage for this kind of matchup. Slow King kind of walls me, Registeel is not to it KO, so that sucks. But outside of that, it should do well. Uh, then we have a Hydreigon, and Hydreigon is uh, a pretty standard set now with Ma being, of course, Rash. I was gonna say Modest, but I actually ended up Rash due to my moveset. And it has uh, Dark Pulse, Dragon Pulse, Fire Blast, and uh, U-Turn. And it's a pretty standard Hydreigon, nothing really game-changing about it. But it's, it's a Scarf variant, which is able to outspeed a Scarf possible Landers. And uh, if it is an Adamant variant, of course, that's what kind of what I'm privy for. If it goes for it, of course, a Scarf variant. I had to be Scarfed to not be forced out by Law Upon every time. And uh, just basically, um, Hydreigon can possibly win this match. 
if Lopin is gone and if Registeel is gone, um, they really doesn't. They are probably the only one that posing a threat to of course a dragon in the long run. That is. So I hate using scarves. I should say that it's um, it's not as prominent as it probably should be. <laughs> then we have Cobillion with the Colberberry uh, Adamant variant. A little bit of a defense is into it, but they, it's um, actually fast enough to speed a Jolly. And Landris is got forced to pay that. And then we have, of course, Close Combat, X Scissor, Toxic, and the Hidden Power Ice. Uh, it should do fair for this matchup. It should do fair. Uh, it's, it's basically here to lure uh, Law Pony for staying in against me and uh, Close Combat, of course, one KO it. High Jump Kick does roughly 65% uh, at best if uh, he's an Advent variant. So that's awesome. Uh, next one and the last one is Yellow Sense Stall Breaker variant. Uh, with mono attacking Scald, so it's definitely walled by Greninja. Then we have Taunt, um, Will Wisp and Recover. And Rocky Helmet there to kind of punish Lopane for going with fake outs against me, and it should prove to be somewhat useful. And um, I have to see it in action, of course, but uh, consider my matchup. Um, both Sloking and Registeel are walled by this set due to its uh, being faster than both of them. And being able to not only force them out, but also recovering in their face without really having to worry about it. So, I like this set. I think it will prove to be useful. Now, what I expect to see from Leo is, uh, of course, being a law pony. Uh, Landers definitely coming. Greninja, Regis is slow king. They are the ones I'll see definitely coming. And then it's up to whether or not he goes for an offensive or defensive approach. So, the last one can either be Laudios, Arcanine, and Explod. I do believe those three fits the bar, uh, but knowing Leo, I probably expect actually, <laughs> I can't really stress this enough, I think he will take the def defensive approach and have something slower, which means I'm probably gonna see Explod coming, but I wouldn't be surprised if I saw Arcanine coming either. So with that said, Baturu. So right, welcome to the team preview, and um, as you guys see, I did predict somewhat right in the comes to the team here. Now he decided to go for an Explod over Arcanine or Lodios, which is both good and bad. I don't like him to adjust myself for it, even though it's not that threatening for my team. Having that said, I'm gonna lead off with uh, Tornadoes for this specific matchup. I do believe a superpower forced Greninja down really, really, really well. So, um, I figured that he most likely go for an Ice Beam or go for some kind of hazards. And I should be able to knock him out from there. But, yeah, outside of that, nothing really big to it. If he decides to leave with Law Pony, I'm just gonna throw in Yelisen because I can force it for a fake out. And of course, Rocky Helmet damage will do, well, more than plenty for this specific situation. So, yeah, with all that said, let's go into, of course, the battle. Oh, I should probably also mention that make sure to check out Leo's channel <laughs> if, you, if you're watching this because he's uploading this at the same day. So anyway, he actually decides to lead up with Law Pony. Now, that's alright. Like I said here, I had a plan B if this were to happen. So I'm gonna just throw in Jellicent here and then I go cut off a free will o -Wisp because he can't KO me from that range. And if he stays in, then um, High Jump Kick or Return won't kill me. So having that in mind, um, he goes for fake out, we're gonna soak that, not that well, but it's just because he got a crit here, which telling me that it's of course Jolly and not an adamant set, which is good, it's really good actually. So it sends in Bruno, of course being a Registeel, we're gonna get him burned, and uh, from this point I can just taunt him, so it, so I don't get anything, you know, kind of screw against me, and um, it actually works like a charm here, because while I go for a taunt, he's gonna reveal that his Thunder Wave, and not toxic, which is great because that means that if it comes down to it, then I win this matchup even if since it can't stall me out with of course the likes of the toxic turns. So as far as I know, this guy is not a threat for me as turn down for what is gonna come, which of course is the boom burst freaking uh, explode. And uh, there is really nothing I can do here, I have to switch out to tornadoes, try to soak the boom burst and try to threaten him out basically, but he goes for a substitute, which I thought alright, fair enough. And that works for me as I go for an air slash to break it. And then I figured he realized that, of course, superpower from this range will knock him out. So, having that in mind, I'm gonna go for an air slash, predicting him to switch out. As I go, as I, as I miss, as he stays in, and the next boom burst does take me out. So, that's unfortunate, but not game decisive. But that, that's really, really, really bad. I was really hoping he would switch out there. 
So he's gonna switch out now of course, as I predicted Landorus as Slow King comes out. So a bit regretful I didn't go for a Toxic here, I go for Hidden Power Ice, which of course does nothing here. And I don't have Bolt Switch uh, basically due to Landorus, I don't want to be locked down with it. So I'm gonna go to Necromedusa, as Psychic proves to do a fair amount of damage. I mean it's not hum, you know, it's not a lot, but it's still it's annoying. As turned down for what? It's gonna come back as I go for another Willow. Should probably have recovered there, but I just really, really want to stop any possible momentum and get some residual damage on anything. So I am forced here to switch into Jayenshi, and Jayenshi can take this damage with little to no issue, at least once. <laughs> as long as I am not Mega Ball, I guess this works. As it does under 50%, which is really nice. Um, which kind of enforces the thought of maybe I should have switched that in first. So, with that said, of course, we're gonna get a little bit of a transition as we are Mega Evolving. But yeah, I just go for Protect, which obviously just isn't working when he switches out. Now, I can't take a Skull, knowing that I'm gonna go to Tolos, um, basically because it deals with Sloking really nicely, as he goes down to turn down for what? And this time, it's not gonna work for him, it's gonna be turned down for real. It's gonna turn be turned down because he's an asshole, so get out of here, Explode. <laughs> so Leo really used that Explode well against me, I mean, it did break apart my team really nicely, so I I'll give him that. Uh, so I go to Betamax, of course, my defensive Scullipede, and uh, all I'm really gonna do here from this position is baiting the landers, which I do, which is great, and um, I'm just gonna go for Toxic, get the residual damage, I'm kind of expecting him to attack me here, and as I go for the a safe earthquake, and that's alright, the thing is here, I could have easily just have switched out back to Hydra even, but I really wanted to see what it goes for, but seeing the earthquake shows me that it is a defensive variant, which also tells me that's probably his rocker too, but I can't really overpredict versus it, of course. So I'm just going to overpredict trying to soak another possible earthquake, as of course the rocks comes up on the field. Now it's not a huge issue that rocks comes, but it is unfortunate that I can't um, offensively waver myself around it. And uh, I'm actually deciding here to go for an earthquake, hoping he hard switches out uh, instead of going for a U-turn, which he actually does here. I mean, it was either that or um, going for another earthquake against me, but that works. That definitely works against me. Now, he's gonna switch in Slow King, but being that I'm... I felt it was weird it did that. Even though I have an Intimidate on me, he would risk a plethora of damage. So I was feeling, alright, he probably has the bug reducing berry. That, that has to be it. One would not make that play if you didn't have that and try to retaliate in return. Having that said, I'm gonna go to Necromedusa as he goes for Skull, which is you know, great. I was kind of predicting that that was probably the best neutral play I could do. So he's gonna switch out Plow King, and I do believe here a Greninja comes. And I go for a Taunt, which in hindsight, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. But yeah, I have to switch out, I'm gonna go back to Tolos. And he goes for, of course, a Dark Pulse, which will do a fair amount of damage, actually. Uh, to be completely honest there, it's not a, like a good amount of damage to take there, as I am forced here to go for a Dragon Pulse. Uh, I was kind of considering what if I win for for um, Dark Pulse, but Dragon Pulse was the optimized play, I guess, as uh, I am, of course, forced to switch out there, and I'm gonna switch out to the Yenshi, predicting a Thunder Wave, uh, which would have been nice if it wasn't that he actually pulled a really, really scary double here, and decided to switch in, of course, his Mega Lopunny. So he pulls the double of a lifetime, consider had he switched in Lopunny and I stayed in being a complete asshole, uh, he would have lost his Lopunny because he would not have been taking this Drake over hell. He pulled it off, so I'll give him that. Uh, so anyway, I go for protect, uh, predicting a high jump kick, which he doesn't go for, but the follow up turn will be a high jump kick and he will knock out my Necro, I was gonna say Necroblusa. But of course, my Mega the NG, and that is unfortunate, but you know, it is the game we play. As I'll bring Fireborn in here and trying to force him out, which I successfully do. I'm gonna go for a Toxic here, predicting, of course, the Slow King to come in, since it has been his number one choice every time. As um, it does. Like, this is this is great, obviously. Having Slow King on a timer finally could prove to be useful, as I'm forced to switch out yet again. I can't risk getting burned, so I'm gonna bring Tolos. 
because you can take any damage from this guy as he goes for a psychic. Be completely immune to that, and um, all I can do from here are actually spamming Dark Pulse. Uh, I was considering doing probably something else, but Dark Pulse just does so much damage. Like, it's insane how much damage that really does. And I'm gonna keep attacking. I could probably predict him switching in Low Pony here. But at this point, all damage are good damage. And uh, Low Pony is gonna come in, which I was fearing in hindsight. But Dark Pulse still managed to do a fair amount of damage. But uh, obviously, I can't. I can't adjust myself to that, so I have to switch out, bring in Necromedusa, as I probably should have in hindsight yet again gone for actually my Scallopede and actually sacked that, because of course that would probably have been more useful in the long run, because we're going down to the end game now, and I'm losing months that may or may not be important for the matchup alone, but I can yet again force out the lop on him, which I was really hoping he would stay in, I'm going to be honest and say that. Uh, as I decide over a close combat, and of course it doesn't really do anything against a Slow King, and I need even more damage onto it. I really, really, really do. At this point, uh, Ink Sister won't take it out, and as I've previously said there, I am fearing that this is the um, it has a bug reducing berry, uh, so I can't really risk around it. As he now can freely go for Skulls if he is so desires, since I don't have, of course, Yelly Sand left, so Skullipede is gonna come down, or go down, come down. Oh. Probably both, as um, I am now in range where Exodus would take him out. So I'm gonna try to do that, but I had a lingering feeling maybe I should go for Hidden Power Ice here. Maybe I should, as of course Lando comes in. And you know, it is where it is. Um, I really, really, you know, if I've done that play, maybe things would have paid off a bit differently. It was a shot in the dark, basically. And um, I am forced now to go for. Um, um, hidden power, hidden power ice, predicting him to not go for earthquake since I still have a hydragon active, and uh, he still goes for earthquake. So basically, I, what I'm trying to say here is that I lost. I mean, we go from me over predicting to um, to Leo being super super predictable and me not predicting at all, and it's just the perfect balance uh, of me just. Trying really to find some momentum in this offensive pressuring while he playing defensively against me and uh, It basically pays off for him and working really really nicely because I just I couldn't keep up I couldn't uh, Offensively check him once and uh, this was definitely what I was fearing and um, not that I played badly or anything like that but that I had to play so out of my own nature going against you know something that I know could defensively shake me time after time and eventually, if you don't get predictions game right, then you're kind of screwed. And this is the situation I end up coming in. And um, I'm not entirely like disappointed about the loss itself, because I do believe, or I did go with that mindset, that if I don't get him early, then you know I'm not going to win this game. Um, this game turned out to be close to a 40 turn battle, and uh, it's something that my team just wasn't made to do. And it's definitely longer than my average games are, but... This was, a, I guess, a team that I knew could, like I said, defensively check me time after time. So yeah, going down to you know the afterthoughts and you know what I probably could have done better and whatnot. Uh, now I will say this: the tornado situation early in the game, it's not heavily game decisive. I do realize that it's a defensive mon that I could have used over and over again that sadly got passed out way too early. But since I decided to go for near slash over superpower. Um, basically what that meant was that uh, I would not have been able to knock him out, I would be able to force him down so he couldn't damage Tiantia again, or not damage Tiantia whatsoever, but I would have lost my um, Tornadoes anyway. Like I said, I was thinking that he knew that a superpower would knock him out from that range and he would switch out, and he said that he was predicting a U-turn, and you know, that's fine. Um, to be completely honest, there are both like very tough plays in the spectrum, and I probably I had more to lose by doing that play. I should definitely have been more predictable. I try to be very unpredictable later in the game, but it also doesn't pay off, which is super, super frustrating. I, Leo was definitely in my head this battle, and um, I just I couldn't find a way around it. Uh, I did actually try my very best here to kind of force him out. Uh, I think the one play I probably regret doing is sacking Jelly Synth instead of Scallopede. I do believe I could have kept using Jelly Synth uh, in the mid game to late game, because I would have forced in Gradidia, I could lock myself onto a better move with the course Hydreigon. But 
those were after thoughts that one can really just hope one saw as the game was turning out. Um, I myself is not overly disappointed about the loss, like I said there. I think I faced a team I was expecting, and it all came down to whether or not I could defensively maneuver around it, and I believe I did the best I could, but that's just not the way I play, and it definitely backfired on me really early. I I'm very bad at playing like against defensive teams who can you know, have a obviously good switch-ins for a tough situations. Uh, those are the team that usually wins against me because I can only pressure a team so much before I lose too much HP myself, of course. So, Leo did play and close a perfect game and um, he's definitely the rightfully winner of this battle. Um, so if anybody else, you know, of course, make sure to check out his channel, I'm pretty sure you guys already have. And to Leo, GG buddy, it was actually a great game and I'm, I had a lot of fun. Even though I lose, like I do believe, 4-0. Uh, it's a much, much closer game than that, and I do realize that uh, <laughs> you were the stronger player for this battle, most certainly. So thank you so much for um, you know taking the time about me and whatnot. And for everybody that's watching, thank you for doing just so, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.